Hello there and welcome on in. I hope the week is treating you well. This week we have another fun budget casual deck for you. But anyways, I'm 16-Bit Ferret and welcome to Building on a Budget. So let's go check this deck out. As I said before, this deck is strictly just for the casual format. And the deck is going to be Mono Black Devotion. Devotion was a mechanic that was first seen in the first Theros set. Devotion does an ability when you have that many mana symbols in play when you cast the card of Devotion. So this means if we cast something that has a black Devotion trigger, what we do is we add up the black mana symbols that are in play, including the card if it is a permanent. Like always, the prices for this deck are going to be pulled from TCG Player at the time of writing and recording this episode. So, on to the creatures we go. Starting off with the creatures list, we're going to be talking about, I'm going to mispronounce this name, Kyombich Witches? I'm just going to call them Witches for uh, safety's sake. These 1-3 human wizards have a casting cost of double black and also has the ability of tap Witches deal 1 damage to any target and 1 damage to any target opponent's choice. This is going to be a great way for picking off small things and hampering our opponent's abilities to uh, get their planeswalkers up and going. However, the, our opponent is going to ping something for 1 also too, so they can ping us for 1 damage or ping a small thing that we have on the board. So it's kind of like a give and take on this. But we're going to be running a full play set of this, and it's going to be about 50 cents for that. Next up is Gatekeeper of Malakir. This vampire warrior has a casting cost of double black, and they also have a kicker of a single black. And when Gatekeeper of Malakir enters the battlefield, if the kicker was paid, target player sacrifices a creature. This creature doubles as a kill spell, and you should almost always pay for the kicker cost on this. What makes this even more awesome is that this can get past Hexproof and Shroud, being if your opponent chooses the creature that has those abilities to be sacrificed. This deck will run a full play set of this card, and it will cost about one dollar. Next up we have Vampire Nighthawk. This 2-3 Vampire Shaman has a casting cost of one, and a double black, and it has flying, death touch, and lifelink. Thanks to flying, this creature will most always connect and swing for damage. Or if we need to uh, block an incredibly big attacker, we can, and thanks to death touch, our opponent's not going to want to hit us and lose their nice big creature. This deck will run a full play set of this, and it'll set us back about a dollar again. Nice. Next creature up is Ravenous Chupacabra. This 2-2 Beast Horror has a casting cost of 2 and double black, and also has the ability of when Ravenous Chupacabra enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls. Another cool creature that doubles as a kill spell to help us get rid of our opponent's creatures. This deck will run a full play set of it, and this will set you back about $4.00. Next up, we have a heavier hitter of Nightmare Shepherd. This 4-4 enchantment creature demon has a casting cost of 2 and double black, and also has the ability of whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do, create a creature token that is a copy of that creature, except it has a base power and toughness of 1-1, one, one and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. This creature will make our opponents want to think twice about dealing with things that we have. So let's say they take out a ravenous chupacabra or a gray merchant. Guess what? It's going to be hurting them again. This deck is going to be running a full play set of this also, and it's going to set us back about $2. All right, now onto the last creature in this deck and the largest piece of the strategy, Gray Merchant of Asphodel. This 2-4 zombie is a casting cost of 3 and a double black. Along with the ability of when Gray Merchant 
of Asphodel enters the battlefield, each opponent loses life equal to X, where X is your devotion to black, and you gain life equal to the life that was lost this way. This zombie will outright end games if your opponent leaves your board unchecked. And at the very least, this is going to be a very annoying creature. That's also going to be a nice blocker for you. This deck will run a full play set of it, and it's going to cost about $2. In the end of all this, the total cost of all the creatures for this deck is going to set you back around $10.50. And now on to enchantments. And the first one we have is going to be Warlock Glass. This enchantment has a casting cost of a single black. It is also a very interesting card too because it's going to help us sink mana later in the game to help level it up. Leveling up this enchantment can only be done on sorcery speed. So this means you can only do it on your turn and not as an interaction or a trigger to something. Level 1 of this lets us have at the beginning of your end step, if a creature dies this turn, each opponent loses one life. And you may pay one in a black, and that'll level it to level two, which will let us have the ability of, when this gets leveled to level two, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. And the final ability costs six in a black mana, but it lets us have at the beginning of our end step, each opponent loses life, equal to the life they lost this turn. This enchantment is going to have a lot of nice functions for us from start to finish. This deck will run a full play set of this card and it'll set you back about eh, 50 cents. Not bad. Last and definitely not least on this uh, enchantment list is going to be Underworld Dreams. This enchantment costs triple black and lets us have whenever our opponent draws a card, Underworld Dreams deals one damage to that player. Now that one damage may seem like small stuff, however, if your opponent's not playing life game, this is going to help really run down their clock. And if you have multiple on play, all stacked up, it's going to be multiple damage, all kicking off at the same time. So we're going to be running a full play set in this deck right here, and it's going to set us back about $2.00. Now that we have the enchantments covered in this deck, the enchantments cost is going to be $2.50. And rounding off this deck list is going to be instances and sorceries. And there's only going to be one playset for this, and that's going to be Read the Bones. This sorcery has a casting cost of two and a black, but it lets us scry two and then draw two cards. And on top of that, we lose two life for this right here. This will help us dig for answers if we need them, or if you need to add some extra fodder to your devotion fire, bam, there you go. This deck will run a full play set of this, and it's going to cost about a dollar. And now on to our basic lands. It's going to be very simple. We're going to run about 24 swamps, and that's going to be the whole deck. So with that said in mind, what's the deck cost going to be in the end? It's going to be, wow, $14. Yeah, that, that's pretty cheap. Okay, but here's the real question. With a deck this cheap, how well can it play? What's its play styles and pitfalls? Well, let's go take a look. The play style of this deck is going to be focusing on ping damage and using our creatures to double as kill spells. Because this right here, the deck is going to be mostly permanents. This means Grey Merchant has a good chance of doing a chunk of damage when it comes out. So now let's go take a look at some of our uh, tool packages. Our ping damage toolkit is going to consist of witches, warlock class, and underworld dreams. Witches let us ping a target, but at the cost of our opponent pinging something too. While warlock class lets us ping our opponent with level 1 if we knock out a creature of theirs, and at level 3 lets us constantly ping things when we do damage to them, and underworld dreams lets us ping our opponents every single time they draw a card. So if they're searching for answers or drawing cards, guess what? It's going to hurt them. Never overlook the power of one damage stacking up because it will hurt. Our removal package is going to be Gatekeeper Malakir and Ravenous Chupacabra. This will be your way to remove creatures for your opponents as long as you remember to pay Gatekeeper's kicker cost. 
The deck even has a slight recovery with it too, and that's going to be all falling back on Nightmare Shepherd, thanks to its ability to bring back creatures as a 1-1 horror. I need, do need to point this out though. Because the token creatures made by Nightmare Shepherd, they have a converted mana cost of 0. So this means creatures made this way will give you a 0 on its devotion cost to Grey Merchant. On top of this, you are going to want to be leery when it comes to witches to tap the ping damage because your opponent's going to pick that 1-1 one, one you made and it's just going to be gone from there. And that actually leads on to the pitfalls of this deck. So the pitfall of this deck is that there's no way for it to deal with enchantments, artifacts, or planeswalkers directly. So you're not going to be able to interrupt strategies involving them. Another pitfall of this deck is going to be board wipes, such as Wrath of God, Day of Judgment, and even Anger of the Gods can set you back pretty hard. So do be aware of that when playing with this deck. Like always, we do have a upgrade idea for this deck. However, this deck we do not. It's mostly made with just for funsies casual, no possible way of wanting it to be upgraded to be anything more than just for fun casual. And this is going to conclude this episode of Building on a Budget. I really do hope that you liked this deck. If there's anything you thought we could add, let me know in the comments below. If you thought it could use any other improvements, let me know in the comments below. Like always, do hit that subscribe button and that like button. It helps us out a lot. And I will see you next Tuesday. Anyways, I'm 16-Bit Ferret. It's been great. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a Duke Duke day.